like Louise thinks I'm spoiled. I've had slaves working for me my whole life. I don't think so. If anyone's a tyrant, it's him. Oh, I forgot to tell Beth to put sugar in this for me. Where would a tyrannical slave driver like him keep sugar? Something you want? <laughs> I can't believe this happened. I was this close to making Miguel mine. No, you weren't. Well, I would have been if my long lost cousin hadn't come skipping into harmony. Well, it's obvious he's totally nuts about her, so you might as well give up all your crazy schemes to get him. I can't think of anything else now. At last, you finally come to your senses. No, I said I can't think of anything else now. But give me some time. I'll think of something. Where am I? You're in Harmony Hospital, Charity. You were in a fire. There's someone here who's very anxious to talk to you. Someone I think you'll be awfully glad to see. Hi. I knew you'd come back. It worked. Just like you said it always did. I'm sorry. Do I know you? Grace, remember what Eve said. Me and Faith's twin. If Charity sees you, she might think that you're a mom. She doesn't know that Faith was... Oh, Sam. We don't know for sure that Faith died in that fire. I mean, they never found her body. Grace, I spoke to the fire chief. He said the fire was so intense that nobody could have survived. And I had men scouting the area to see if she had wandered off. They didn't find anyone meeting that description. Look, I know I should accept that Faith is gone. It's just, I can't let go. Not yet. I understand. But I still don't think that we should do anything to traumatize Charity. Of course. I'm just worried. I mean, why doesn't Charity remember Miguel? Of course we've met. It's me, Miguel. Miguel? Yes. Don't you remember me? Well? Tell us, Ethan, is Teresa the girl who's been doing all these things to you? Is Pilar's daughter really your stalker? All you have to do is positively identify her as your stalker. It's an open and shut case, Ethan. Teresa will be put away where she can never bother you again. But it depends on you. You gotta tell me, is Teresa your stalker? Well, Ethan, can you tell us, is Teresa your stalker? Yes, I can tell you. Thanks. 
Excuse me, I, I didn't know that this was the men's locker room. Now you know. I feel like such a fool. It's funny, you don't look like one. Hank. In fact, you look your usual gorgeous self today, Miss Crane. Your face is a little red, though. Has Luis been giving you a hard time again? I just ran into him in the locker room. Oh. He'd just gotten out of the shower. Oh. It was an accident. I was just looking for some sugar. Did you find it? <sighs> I'm sorry. It is kind of funny, though. Funny? I've never been so embarrassed. Why isn't there a sign on the door that says men's locker room? You got me. Hank. Luis. Something funny? I was just wondering when you were going to put a sign on the locker room. You never know when an accident might happen. Yeah, if it was an accident. Do you think I was deliberately trying to sneak a peek at you? It's been known to happen. Oh, I can't believe your ego! Sure, he's just teasing you. Why isn't there a sign on the door? Well, we didn't need one until you came here. Well, if you only had half a brain... Hey, 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 hey. Lighten up, kitties, okay? I'll make a sign, all right? Look, she's the one who was ordered to do community service here, not you, Hank. Well, a community servitude having to take orders from you. Well, you wouldn't even be here if you hadn't plowed in my police car and... Look, just cool it, both of you. Look, what's my next assignment? I've got 96 hours and 15 more minutes left. The sooner I get through them, the better. Well, there's something we can agree on. Let's see. Your next assignment. Right, cleaning the toilets, starring the roof. Well, I've considered that, but no. I've been watching your work, and I can see what your real potential is now. Oh? And what's that, Officer Lopez Fitzgerald? Well, it's a stretch, but... What do you want me to do? Order lunch, if you can handle it. Okay, how can you actually believe you can still get Miguel? Why not? Have you seen the way he looked at Charity? He's never looked at you like that. Well, he would if you hadn't burst in and interrupted me the night I snuck into his room. I was so close to sharing a night of ecstasy with Miguel. You were so close to being caught in your undie. Lingerie. Lingerie, whatever. Miguel's brother almost caught you. Did Miguel ever figure out why you were really in his bedroom? No, he just woke up when you burst in and ruined everything. <sighs> he should be with me now, not Charity. I need him more than her. Okay. How can you be so cold? Charity's your cousin, and now she's an orphan. Her mother, your aunt, was killed in that fire, and Charity would have died, too, if Miguel hadn't rescued her. If only. I I'm gonna pretend you didn't say that. Look, I, I feel bad for Charity, and I feel bad that my mom lost her sister. But, hey, life goes on. And I plan to spend my life with Miguel. He wants to be with Charity. She's all wrong for him. Miguel needs a woman with passion and fire. Charity's so goody-goody, so sickeningly sweet. She doesn't belong with a man like Miguel. She belongs in a convent. If only I could convince her to join a convent. <laughs> Miguel, really? We're in a convent. He can't keep his hands off me. Kay's the best wife and mother a man could ever ask for. I could never love any woman but her. There you see, Charity. Oops. I mean, Sister Charity. Aren't you glad I talked you into becoming a nun? You only would have made Miguel miserable. You're a mean girl, Kay. Mean. Charity, put down that ruler. You tricked me into joining a convent, and now you're gonna pay. Ow! 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 That won't work. But I'll think of something. You know who I am, Charity. No, I'm sorry I don't. But you have to. We met at the carnival, remember? No. No, I've never seen you before. Miguel. I don't understand, Doctor. Should I know who that boy is? No, it's okay, Charity. I know what it is. All the smoke from the fire, it hurt her eyes. She can't see well. That's why she doesn't recognize me. Well, it's possible. Could you check her eyes, please? 
Charity, I'm going to check your vision. I look up. I look down. Side to side. That's good. Let me take a look here. It's just the smoke. But Charity remembers me. She has to remember me. So, Ethan, tell us. Is Teresa your stalker? Oh, excuse me, I didn't know. Teresa. You're Teresa's mother, right? Yes. All right, I need to ask you a few questions. Do you mind? Absolutely not, Frank. I will not have you grilling Pilar. Is something wrong? Mr. Lomax here thinks Teresa is Ethan's stalker. It's, um, it's a very serious charge, Pilar. If it's true, Teresa could go to jail under the state's new stalker laws. Ethan was just about to tell us whether or not Teresa is the stalker. Well, Ethan. That is, I never hurt Ethan. Are you admitting your daughter is Ethan's stalker? The menus, they all deliver. I'd rather go pick it up. I need the air. Suit yourself. What do you want to eat? You decide. I'm honored. Oh. You just can't resist, can you, Louise? What? All I did was ask her to order lunch. Oh, come on. Do you think you can handle it? Well, what are the chances that a crane's ever ordered takeout before? Well, you're being way too hard on her, Louise. Hey, that goes both ways, buddy. I mean, she's been a pain in the butt ever since she crashed into my police car, and it's only got worse since she's been here. Then why didn't you just take the donation she offered the youth center and, and cut her loose? Look, the judge ordered her to serve 100 hours of community service right here. And that's what she's gonna do. Well, it sounds like a case of cut off the nose, spite the face to me, Louise. I mean, you told me the center was desperate for the money. If you'd have just taken the check. I'm not taking a damn cent from the cranes. And that's what this is really about. You don't like the cranes. That's why you're taking it out on Sheridan. I don't like her arrogance and snobbery. Well, Sheridan isn't like that. She's got you snowed because she's rich and no, beautiful. I like her, but there's more to Sheridan than that. Oh, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's a whole lot more. <laughs> I've got to think of some way to get Charity away from Miguel. Give it up, Kay. I know. I just read an article about sweatshops. I could sell her off to a sweatshop. <sighs> this the package? Yeah. What do you think of her? She's kind of scrawny. We need girls that can work hard, 12 hour shifts. Oh, she'll be a real hard worker, I promise. Please don't do this to me, Kay. Don't let them take me be away. Be quiet. You're gonna love working in a sweatshop. Yeah, we'll take her. Great, where's the money? It's empty. I'm gotcha. What? What the? Now we got two for the price of one, and the price was nothing. <laughs> hey, relax. Let me go. <laughs> Faster, move it. Ow. What's your problem now? This needle keeps sticking my finger. That's tough. Now I want to see more product or it's solitary again for you. No, not that. Well, can't you be more like Charity? She's the best worker we've ever had. Now faster, move it, let's go. No, that won't work either. How can I get rid of Charity? Think, Kay, think. If your vision is cloudy, the eye drop should help. How many fingers am I holding up? Two. And can you tell me what that's a picture of over on the wall? Flowers. Good. My vision seems fine. I think she should be able to recognize you now. Hi. Hi. Do you remember me now? What I mean is that Teresa would never deliberately do anything to hurt Ethan. There! I knew it. I knew Pilar's daughter was not the stalker. 
She's her mother. Of course she's going to cover for her daughter. I trust Bilar's word implicitly. She has worked for the Crane family for years. She's been like a second mother to Ethan. She would never allow anyone, including her own daughter, to harm Ethan. Isn't that right, Pilar? Teresa never attacked Ethan. Daughters are always hiding things from their mothers. You are really beginning to annoy me, Mr. Lomax. The case is closed. Teresa is cleared. Hold on. Right, we still haven't heard from the victim. Ethan, you've seen the stalker face to face. If you make a positive ID, we can call the police and settle this matter once and for all. Ethan. Look, you all know how angry I am about what the stalker did to me and how I'm determined to make an example out of her. Not so much as for me, as for my family. I want to make sure that nothing like what happened to me will ever happen to my mother, my father, my sisters, or my Aunt Sheridan. And the only way I know how to do that is by setting an example that is so severe that no one will ever target this family again. Are you happy now, Teresa? Your obsession with Ethan Crane humiliated our family. I didn't mean it. Mom has lost her job. Miguel will never go to college. And I will never be anything more than a cop here in Harmony. Uh, no, you won't. Arresting your sister as my stalker will be your last official duty, Officer Lopez with Cheryl. You can turn in your badge. Do you realize what you have done? You have destroyed the future of our entire family. I admire the way you want to protect your family, Ethan, and I know this isn't easy. You care about Pilar and wouldn't do anything to hurt her, but you are the only one who knows for sure who the stalker is. And if that girl is Teresa, None then... of us want to believe that. But we have to know for sure. This is a very serious charge. Yes, I know, Mother. Well, Ethan, can you tell us? Without any doubt, is Teresa the stalker? I can tell you, without any doubt. Say, how'd your youth center team do this year? Not bad, we made it to the semifinals. No kidding, that's great. Yeah, I think if I get the same bunch of guys back next year, we can go all the way, baby. That'd be cool. Yeah. I mean, if we do that, maybe I can talk to city council into giving us a grant for some new equipment here at the youth center. You remember that year our high school team won the district championship? Yeah. I still got my trophy, don't you? Yeah, it's in storage somewhere. But you remember that last play? You were playing shortstop and I was on second base. Man, that was unbelievable. Ninth inning. We're up by one. Man on first. Tie and run. One out and Frank Nesbitt comes up to bat, their best power hitter, and man, he hit a rocket at you. I couldn't believe you caught it. And Lopez Fischel ranges deep into the hole. He backhands the ball. Wow, he fired that ball like a bullet to Bennett on second base. Bennett turns the double play pivot flawlessly. He fires. And nips the runner at first by half a step. And Harmony I wins the district championship. Ah! That was the best defensive play I've ever seen, Luis. I couldn't believe how fast your hands were. Not even Garcia Parra's pulled off a play at Fenway like that. We were on top of the world that day, weren't we? Yeah. We even talked about one day getting drafted by the Red Sox and being the best double play combination they ever had. Yep, high school dreams, Hank. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great bunch of guys on that team. The best. Yeah, those were good times. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's so funny. You remember that time you tried to steal second and the catcher's throw hit you right in the helmet? Yeah, did I see stars? <laughs> the ball bounced off your head and flew into center field. And you had your bell rung so bad that you didn't know where you were going. And you ran straight across the pitcher's mound. And I knocked the pitcher right off the mound. <laughs> Slid in the home plate. And then I knocked the umpire over too, didn't I? He kept saying, <laughs> I'm safe, I'm safe. <laughs> it took me two innings to figure out my name. Oh, man. <laughs> Am I interrupting something? 
Uh, well, me and Luis were just talking about old times. Well, it must have been pretty good times. You know, I think that's the first time I've ever heard you laugh, Luis. Yeah, well, you got lunch? Right here. Finally. It smells good. I ordered Chinese food. Chinese for lunch? Mm -hmm. I love Chinese anytime. Me too. I wanted to try something different, so I ordered off the menu. What do you mean, different? Well, I thought we'd start with something light. Moss soup with mushrooms. Moss soup? Then I have fried frog's legs with balsamic pears. Frog's legs? Mm-hmm. Well, it's braised in a spicy sauce. Uh, cow tongue. Cow tongue? With a rice crust. Ah, let's see, steamed wild duck. Okay, wild duck, that's something I can eat. And that's sauteed with gizzard in a sweet and sour snail sauce. Snail sauce, you gotta be kidding. Oh, you know what, you're right. I should have ordered a light caterpillar sauce. Cat what? You know, I ask you to do one simple thing, order lunch, and you can't even do that? I ordered lunch. Nothing edible. What did you order from the book cafe? Because I wanted to try something different. Oh, and that's all that matters, isn't it? What you want. A true crane. You know, maybe you would think that no one else wants gizzards sautéed with caterpillars? That's steamed duck, Luis, with a sweet and sour gizzard sauce. Shut up. You're so hot to try something new. Why don't you try thinking about someone else for a change? That would be different. You're very weird. You know that, Kay? Who else would think of selling her own cousin to a sweatshop? It's just a thought. Are you really that desperate to get Miguel? Desperate? No. Determined? Very determined. Look at me, Charity. You have to remember me. No. Charity needs to rest. Why does that boy think he knows me, Doctor? Just relax, Charity. Just get some sleep. I can't believe Charity doesn't remember me. Miguel, she's been through a terrible trauma. You're right, Chief Bennett. That must be it. I mean, it's only natural she'd be kind of confused. Yes. But at least she's alive. She's gonna get better. Right, Mrs. Bennett? Of course, Miguel. There's Miguel. And your parents. Come on, let's find out how Charity's doing. Like I care. You should. She's your cousin. That's right. Finally, some compassion. What would Miguel think if he thought I didn't care about my cousin? I'm sure after Charity gets some rest, she'll remember me. Charity doesn't remember you? I can't eat this. I'll have to go out. Louis, wait. I ordered you some steamed rice and some beef and broccoli. You did? Yes. I figured you wouldn't want to try anything too adventurous. Oh, you have no idea how adventurous I can be. Oh, then I guess you'll try the eel. Well, the beef's fine. You have forks? I thought you said you were adventurous. I'll get my own. The least he could have done was try to use the chopsticks. Well, you knew damn well he wouldn't. He's such a basic beef and vegetable kind of guy. Well, you read him right. He always had a cheeseburger and fries when we double dated in high school and Latin food at home. Oh, I feel sorry for any girl who dated him. Could anyone be so desperate? Well, at least my dates could identify what they were eating. Oh, I'm sure. Because you probably told them what to order. This smells great. I feel like I'm back in Hong Kong. When were you there? A few years ago. I worked on a tramp steamer. I traveled all over that part of the world. Hey, I bet you stayed at the peninsula. Now, what would make you say that? Because that's where all you glamorous people stay. Well, how would you know that if you worked on a tramp steamer? I got shore leave. <laughs> Obviously, you made the most of it. I got around. <laughs> I bet you did. Oh, I loved Hong Kong. But it's not for everyone, because it's so different. 
You know, I found this incredible restaurant when I was there. It was just this little hole in the wall, but it had the most amazing food. You had to go down this little alley, and there was no sign, and just this broken down door. And a courtyard with the most beautiful rock garden and a pond. Yeah, you've been there? Absolutely. There were all these like little tiny connecting rooms. Yeah, it was a family operation. The mother and grandmother cooked all the food. Oh, the most amazing oh. food. The menu is so different. Hey, Luis. You're lucky Sharon didn't order anything from there because you might have ended up eating steamed ox's Spare bowl. me. <laughs> I can tell you without any doubt, Teresa is not the stalker. I knew it. Well, I'm glad for your sake this is over. No, no, Ethan. You gotta take a better look at her face. I know that this is the girl. I said she wasn't the girl, Frank. But her Mr. Hair, Lomax! I think we've all had quite enough of your crazy theory. The case is closed. Your services are no longer needed. It's time we all just got back to our lives. Speaking of which, Gwen, you and I have a meeting at the Crane Foundation. I'm ready. Uh, what meeting? Your mother asked me to help her coordinate some charity fundraisers. I'm assuming at some point my very intelligent son will make the very intelligent decision and propose to this darling girl. And when she's officially a member of the family, I want her to be familiar with all of the Crane Charities. You're gonna have to get used to my mother's subtlety, Gwen. Well, there are a lot of things I could get used to. Mm, I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Therese, you should go home now. I don't get it. You described the stalker to me. I drew a sketch. The sketch looked exactly like Teresa. Same hair, same eyes. How can you tell me that she's not the stalker? Because she isn't. If you're trying to protect Teresa because her mother is- I don't want to discuss this anymore, Frank. All right, I see. So this whole speech about wanting to protect your family about wanting to set an example so no one would target you again. That didn't mean anything. That's not true, Frank. I would do anything for my family. Then tell the truth. Admit that Teresa is your stalker. And when she came to, she didn't remember who I was. She still doesn't remember me. That's wonderful. Okay, how could you say that? I mean, isn't it wonderful that she came too? That's the most important thing, right? Of course, sweetheart. Thanks, Kay. You always know how to make me feel better. So how's my cousin, Dr. Russell? I've been really worried about her. She's asleep. Can I see her? Well, you can all go in one at a time in a few minutes when I'm sure she's sound asleep. I'll wait out here. Why? Don't you want to see Charity? Well, Dr. Russell feels that since Charity's mother is my twin, it might be traumatic for Charity to see me, especially if Faith didn't survive the fire. Grace, I'm, I'm sure it will be fine after she's asleep. Thanks, Eve. Dr. Russell, did Charity remember me? No. But maybe she will when she wakes up. Excuse me. Sam. Sam, when you rescued me from that fire 20 years ago, I woke up and I didn't remember anything, and I still don't. What if that happens to Charity? We'll just have to hope for the best, sweetheart. Would you call again about Faith, see if anybody's found her? Yeah, sure. Come on. We'll be right back, guys. We're going to go check and see if there's any news on Charity's mother. OK. This is perfect, Simone. Charity doesn't remember Miguel. I still have a chance with him. <laughs> and I'll just bet you'll make the most of it. Oh, yes. I'm gonna show Miguel what love from a real woman is like. By the time I'm through with him, Miguel's gonna be the one with memory loss. He's not gonna remember a thing about Charity. So there I am. I got a girl on each arm. I'm standing up on this yacht. I'm waving down at my buddies. You should have seen the looks on their faces. <laughs> You're unbelievable, Hank. 
You went from a tramp steamer to a yacht, all based on your charm. That and my amazing sex appeal. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, you must have been something in high school. Heartthrob of Harmony High. Well, I had my share of dates, but I wasn't the main heartthrob. Oh? Hmm. Boy, he must have been something, whoever he was, to have beaten you out of the title. Oh, he's one of the best men I've ever known. He's captain of the football team, the basketball team, and baseball team. He's not only uh, that, but class president and all Victorian. Wow. Where did he end up? Stanford, Harvard, Yale? No, he didn't go to college. He stayed right here in Harmony and became a cop. Jeez, what a waste. Oh, you're not talking. Oh, Louis, I'm, I'm really sorry. No, that's okay. I make no apologies for what I've done with my life or the choices I've made. I mean, yeah, my blue-collar job may be a world away from Harvard grads, but I'm proud of what I accomplished. I wouldn't change a thing. Thanks for the beef and broccoli. Maybe next time we'll have cheeseburgers. <clears throat> Just gonna pump up some basketballs for the tournament. I didn't mean to insult him. Insult him? No way. Luis is one of the most self-confident guys I know. And he's also one of the best men I know next to my brother, Sam. I, I just don't understand how somebody with such a bright future could not go to college. Well, he just felt that, you know, he wanted to stay home in Harmony and take care of his family. I mean, with Luis, family comes first. He's a good man. You know, and he's also the best friend I've ever had. I trust him with my life. You make him sound like a saint. Well, he has his faults. Oh, I know. I've seen them. Well, you two just got off on the wrong foot, that's all. You know, give him some time. Well, I'm giving him 100 hours, and then I hope to never see him again. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way about him. Well, you haven't had to deal with the hard-nosed cop that I've had to deal with. Look, I know Luis takes his job very seriously. But Luis believes in upholding the law, and if anybody's done something wrong, he won't give up until that person's been brought to justice. I mean, if he has any faults, that's it. He won't quit until he's seen justice done. I didn't mean to do it. Yes, you did. You did. No, no, no! You make a good argument, Frank. Then admit that she's the stalker. She looks like the girl in the sketch, but she isn't the girl who attacked me. Ethan, I know she's the girl. What I don't know is, why are you protecting her? Case closed, Frank. All right. You know what, fine. I did my job. If you come to your senses and you want to bring her to justice, you let me know. You are a very lucky girl, Teresa. Thank you, Ethan. I'd like to speak to Teresa alone, Pilar. Yes, of course. I'll see you later at home. Yes. a million miles away just now. What were you thinking about? Me, I hope. <laughs> I've... Oh, there's the fax machine. I better go check it. One of my duties. <clears throat> need some help? Sure. You won't even need a pump. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> um, Sheridan feels bad. She didn't mean to insult you. Uh, she couldn't. Besides, if going to Harvard means having to eat caterpillar sauce, I'm glad I stayed in Harmony. You did a background check on me? Why? I'd like to know who's working for me. Damn you. Well, according to this, Sheridan's past is squeaky clean. Maybe, but I still think she's hiding something from her past. What could she be hiding? I don't know. But as long as she's working here, I'm gonna keep an eye on her. 
I can't believe Luis did a background check on me. He still suspects something happened in my past. I can't let him find out what happened all those years ago. I can't. No one can ever find out. Okay, where are your parents? Oh, they went to go make a phone call about Charity's mom. Do you think she's still alive, Mom? Honestly, sweetheart, I don't know how she could have survived that fire. Charity's gonna be devastated. Well, we'll all have to be very strong for her. Is Charity gonna be all right, Dr. Russell? Yes. She inhaled some smoke and, and there's a memory loss. I'm sure that's only temporary. Can I go in and see her now? Yes, but don't wake her up. She needs her rest. And get back to work. Yes! Yes! Charity's lost her memory. How'd you come up with that? Didn't you hear when Miguel said that the memory loss was only temporary? Your mom didn't think so. She didn't say that. Right, and she's a doctor, so that's a bad sign. Well, not for me. You are really turning into a ghoul. Well, if I am, I'm one happy ghoul. Miguel is gonna be mine. Charity can get her memory back any day. Or she could have amnesia for the next 20 years like my mom. Miguel and I could have kids in college by that time. Yes! Please, God, let Charity be all right. Please let her remember me. to say I'm... Teresa, I know you're the girl who attacked me. No! Everything that happened, they were just accidents, I swear. I never meant to hurt you. You have to believe that. I am so grateful to you for not turning me in. Not just for me, but for my mother. And I won't be working here anymore. I quit, so you'll never have to see me again after today. I'll be out of your life forever. I am so sorry for all the trouble I've caused. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Oh, no, Teresa. You're not getting away that easily. <laughs> <laughs>